Welcome, I'm Rabbi Phil Bressler of Beit Am in Corvallis, Oregon, and this is the daily summary video for the Kitsur Shulchan Aruch Yomi Daily Halakha Learning Project, covering the passage from Simon 84, Se'if 16, to Simon 85, Se'if 3. You can find links to the Hebrew and English text of this passage and to the calendar of upcoming passages in this video's description. Still discussing and concluding carrying garments and ornaments on Shabbat. Remember, garments and ornaments, there'll be a test at the end. Is your, ta is your talit a garment that you can carry on Shabbat? Yes, you, if you wear it in the usual way, as it were, whatever that means for you and your community. For example, you may have seen a couple of different styles that are pretty common. There's the unfolded, sort of thrown over the shoulders, cape style. There's also the neatly folded uh, around your neck style. You often see that in Reformed congregations. Whatever the usual way means for you, you can wear it that way. If you have a broken fastener on a garment, say your garment closes with strings or snaps or hooks or zippers, if one half broke off, the other half is now useless, that's now maybe a burden that's forbidden to carry. It is if you intend to repair the broken one, which means that the half that's still there, that's not really useless. Or if it's valuable, like it's made of silver or silk or something like that, then it counts as a burden. You can't wear that broken garment out on Shabbat. Toupees and wigs are okay to wear out on Shabbat. They are considered ornaments. And finally, protective amulets and charms. Yes, people believed in the power of amulets and charms for a really long time. The Talmud takes for granted that such things are, that there are such things as real, powerful, effective amulets. So can you wear that out on Shabbat? It's complicated. Kitsur says consult an authority. It so happens not that I'm an authority, but I happen to have been recently learning the fifth parak of Tractate Shabbat, where I learned it's okay to wear an amulet out as long as it's been proven effective. How one goes about doing that, I don't yet know. Siman 85 covers what to do if, God forbid, a fire breaks out during Shabbat. Now, the Kitsur immediately goes into a discussion where the, the pressing priority seems to be not rescuing people, not putting the fire out, not acting to prevent it from spreading, but rather the top priority seems to be making sure you avoid carrying from one domain to another. Now, if your immediate reaction is, this is crazy and stupid, you can be forgiven. At the end of the Siman, which is not actually gonna get covered today, it'll be covered tomorrow, it does say, extinguish the fire when life is endangered and you can worry about your, your Shabbat violations later. So at least there's that. But at the same time, it's really difficult for me, I can tell you, to imagine a version of my life where I'm so well-versed and so punctilious about Hutza'ah that my first reaction to a house fire is gonna be, well, I better not carry anything right now. So I wanna caution you as we discuss this, even if your intention is not to strive to live this way, at least try to ask yourself, what can I learn from this that's useful to me? I propose there's something valuable here about the way we should strive to live Shabbat, like to really make it a part of our lives and our character, to not only think on the spot, you know, at each moment on Shabbat where we bump up against whatever sort of don'ts we're striving to, striving to avoid. Don't only just think on the, on, on the spot at that moment, how should I handle this? Rather, we should rehearse those moments. We should think about them in advance and game them out and visualize what our response is going to be. So even if your action to a house fire is never going to be OMG carrying, I think it's worthwhile to think through and rehearse your Shabbat practice to the point where, say, you're striving to avoid spending money on Shabbat and somebody goes, hey, you want to go to a movie? You've got the wherewithal to say, no, thanks. That's a don't for me on Shabbat. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so here's the actual summary. There's a rabbinic, a rabbinic prohibition in place that forbids you to bring belongings, uh, to rescue belongings, even ones you'd be otherwise permitted to touch on Shabbat, from, uh, from a, a building on fire on Shabbat, out of concern that in so doing, you're going to forget it's Shabbat and you're going to extinguish that fire. So fire is one of the only things that's specifically named in the Torah as a thing you can't work with on Shabbat. Almost all the rest of this comes through a process of interpretation. So putting out a fire is just about the worst thing you can do on Shabbat. It's the worst kind of Shabbat violation. So the limit of what you can rescue is just what you need for, for the day, whatever's left of the day. 
So say it's the middle of the night, fire breaks on your home, you can grab enough food and wine for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, plus utensils to eat and drink with. You don't have to spend time measuring. If all your wine is in one barrel, say, you can rescue the whole barrel. You can also tell other people, hey, come grab something for yourself. And the for yourself part is important because you can't have them violate Shabbat and rescue stuff for you. You can't say, rescue this for me. You can, though, essentially declare your property to be Hefker, ownerless, and say, hey, come rescue this for yourself. Take whatever you can. Now, all the rules about carrying still apply. So carrying out into your, your courtyard, say, that's totally fine. But unless there's an Eruv in place beyond that into which you could carry things, you can't carry anything out at all. Except, of course, and here's the test, say it with me, garments and ornaments. That's all today for today. As always, our learning is dedicated to uh, Rabbi Shlomo Gansfried, the author of the Kitsur, and the historic Jewish community of Ushurad, Ukraine. We'll see you tomorrow.